Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Hello and welcome to another edition, why it's the international edition once again of Attack of Opportunity, where we go outside of North America, hands across the water, reaching across the pond, and we have found an absolutely lovely podcast that I have been following for about a year now, the RPG Penance podcast you'll know them on twitter because it's the one with the guy reaching for the mouse trap with a d20 on it but that's kind of a no-no we are speaking with rowena known as dragon and of course nikolai pupski from the penance rpg podcast guys thank you so much for being on the show today hello thank you for having us hello thank you so now we've got some technical problems cleared up and this is take two it's so rare i was bragging to the last uh the last um person that was like you know i've done them all in one take you know uh, we had one audio issue and it just kind of killed the interview and they'll get back to me and i'll re-interview them later but i kind of say i've never been halfway through an interview and found something that's uh totally on me so you'll just You'll just never get to know the wonderful, which was the original interview, and we're going to try again. But now these guys are professionals at this and have got their answers down <laughs> pat. Which brings me, mm. of course, to the first question that we love to ask all of our victims, I mean guests, here at the Attack of Opportunity podcast. Let's start with Rowena. How did you know that you were first a geek, a nerd, one of us, one of us? Well... It wasn't particularly something I identified with. Probably until I met Nikolai, I had I'd always been into like the fantasy novels, um, especially Tolkien early on. Um, so then loads of other books and things, and then I had just finished my fourth year of my degree um, at university or school depending where you are mm -hmm. um, and I was introduced to Nikolai and he was in the middle of a game of D&D 3.5 and it looked interesting and I kind of got sucked in from there <laughs> so you bust into the room and you're like what are you guys doing this isn't football you know you can come with your, your favorite no team shirt on and everything and just they were a bunch of nerds playing a game but it looked good thank, thank god for your lord of the rings background right uh nikolai same question how did you know was there you know a defining moment for you um you, like, as, as i said before i think um i was i've never really been one to realize i was in the sort of uh sort of geek and nerd community for a long time um when i was in uh, like when i was in high school for example i was always the because i did like rugby and um a lot of other things i was very much never in the sort of popular kids but i was never in the kind of like other end either i was always that kind of meshing of everyone so because of that i i like the things i did at uni for example like i was my most of my friends were just metalheads really they weren't really geeks effectively um but like things like when i was playing pokemon for example and stuff like that like no one in my high school cared like i did warhammer for example no one in my high school cared I asked pretty much everyone I knew was interested. Nope, no interest at all. Yeah, nope. and I'm like, oh, okay. So I found most of my stuff out with high school and stuff. And then it wasn't until I went to uni and did like um, the Retro Gaming Society, for example, which is something I found I did in my third year at uni, where we just met up and played like um, Sega Genesis and like NES and SNES kind of thing, like old proper old consoles. Like I think we had a rule of it has to be before before the PS2, so it can be very much up to like you know PS1 and I think someone said they should let a Dreamcast. That was a big debatable thing, but yeah, it was all like the old Saturn and stuff like that. The old consoles you really love time to play with and stuff. Um, but we did all that, and that was the first time really I would say that I felt that I'd found a sort of geek culture effectively, and that was a group of friends that again sort of later on transitioned into a sort of D and D group. Well, you've actually answered my second question, like, was there a defining moment or like a gateway drug? And a Warhammer, I'm surprised any student would play that because it's expensive. I don't know how it is over there, but over here, yeah, you, know, you, you buy the mini, you got to put the mini together, you paint the mini, and then you show up at your friend's place. He's like, oh, we're not doing that scenario. What? But I, I want to be the Dark Elves. No, 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 we're doing this. Sorry. Just pull out the Kleenex box. That's your tank. Okay. And, you know, I figure I've spent $40 on this. Nope, we're not using walkers. You know, that type of thing. It was expensive. That's one defining moment mm -hmm. that I remember yeah. uh, about that, why you might not find anyone. But um, 
Dragon, was there a defining, like, was there a gateway drug? You talked about reading Lord of the Rings and stuff and walking in on these guys, but um, was there anything else that kind of led you into it? Video game or story or even folks were always talking about how dad was into sci-fi and, you know, the TV was watching Buck Rogers and stuff back in the day. No, a lot more of their interests were much more the, the folklore and the traditional music and things, um, which... I have a fondness for, but I'm not particularly into, like, I'm not particularly a part of. Um, after meeting Nikolai, he wound up managing to get me into his World of Warcraft guild. And that was probably <laughs> the thing that made the biggest difference. The, MM the MMO. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. There actually is like a, like a RPG uh, hard cleaning. Uh, type oh, of thing. Yeah. Sorry, I just got to check something. There's a, I don't know if I'm moving my chair or something. There's like a rubbing, squeaking noise. Either someone's cleaning a window with Windex or I'm moving my chair around too much. Something, something's rubbing. Um, so my next question uh, back to Nikolai is how long have you considered yourself a gamer? Like how long have you been doing this? Um, regarding RPGs, it's probably since I was about, I think it's I've said many, many times I've told the story when I was 19 and I first got into uh, playing RPGs, which was Cyberpunk 2.0, uh, because my one of my best friends when I was at uni, uh, this guy had a thing for her, and he desperately wanted to try and prove that he would be a good boyfriend material by playing an RPG for her. So I, as the best friend, got dragged in, <laughs> kicking and screaming. To, You're like uh, the RPG the wingman? That was like, yeah, you'll play as well, you'll be the heavy, and she'll play this, and her flatmate will come in and do this, and her, his younger brother will come in and do this, and it'll be like, the four of us sitting on the table, all of us like, what are we doing here? So I, I missed a beat here. Very, very important definition here. The girls were into it. So like most guys in like that date movie, I got to learn what the girl's into to get popular with the girl. Or did you just force D and D? Your buddy like forced D and D on these girls uh, going. Literally, this is how my, you win my their best hearts. friend. She was like, I don't really know what this is, but he's like, he wants to teach me how to play this RPG, and I'm just like, oh. sure. <laughs> how, how bad can it be? <laughs> and uh, it was just the four of us. It was me, uh, her her flatmate and her flatmate's younger brother sitting around this table while this guy has uh, like, he's got maps and he's got a soundtrack that he's put together himself and he's got yeah. a pointer for pointing things out and you're just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. rubbish, I'm rubbish in person, but wait till she beats my characters, yeah? Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait till, till she I'm hears the... track four. So we'll yeah, know it's, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, okay, I got, yeah. I, got, I got you. That's, that, man, that's got to be one of the best <laughs> stories I've heard on this show. <laughs> be my wingman. Sure, where are we going? Dancing, the bar, bowling? No. I got my pointer and my, no, I'm not even getting into that image. That, that's really great. Um, so, Dragon, uh, Rowena, I dare you to top uh, that one. How long have you been gaming? <laughs> Please don't tell me you were one of these girls involved with this sort of uh, date trap thing going on here. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I am. Um, I don't think I would have had as much patience as they did with it. To be <laughs> I'd love it if um, that was the game you walked in on the four of them, and you're just like, "What's going on here?" <laughs> and there's Nikolai. Help me! I'm the wingman. I think that means I'm like the bard or the rogue. I, I go flanking. Anyway, uh, sorry. How long have you been gaming, Dragon? Um, sorry. When you're ready. I didn't mean to <laughs> well, <laughs> just set I'm, you off. My brain's just like. Oh. <laughs> So ten years. Ten years. Yep. I so I've been, here, yeah. As as I said, I met Nikolai, and that's kind of it's all his fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> Completely his fault. All of this. Um, but that was about <laughs> ten years ago. I love having two so, people on the show. So instead of learning from your previous experience, Nikolai, it happened again. With <laughs> he's coming. Okay. No, 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 no. no. I didn't okay. think I was going to impress her with the uh, game. That was the uh, big difference. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right. So, uh, guys... Although, there's another difference, in fairness. We did get together. We were together for we four did. years. Oh, so. we did. oh, okay. All right. And, well, but must, uh, you know, must still be good friends, or is it, are, are you yeah. guys like, um, oh, that's my phone going off. Um, is it after this interview, you just, you know, well, I guess there's different <laughs> cars waiting to take you from my virtual studio now. Um, brings me next to what made you guys decide to join the 1% and start content creating, like to start an actual podcast, because it is blood, sweat, and tears. I know this for a fact and very, very time consuming. A lot of people have the illusion that it's like, buy a microphone, put it in the middle of the table, the Yeti will do, and we'll just 
press play and record and it's no 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 <laughs> <laughs> so much involved especially if you're gonna make it go now people do that and they have a lot of fun and it's really cute to listen and watch and and their numbers are staggering and you're like good for you good for you but uh, what got you guys into it um about three and a half four years ago um we were looking it was me and my me and my wow guild we were looking for something to do because it was, it was the point where there was really bad content drought and we we finished the raid and we were like right well we don't really want to spend the next four or five months running through this over and over again because we've kind of got all the gear we've got so we were like well what can we do and we had a look around and we was like oh, we'll play D D. And everyone's like, that's a great idea. We'll play D&D. It'll be a laugh. We'll do this. And then a couple of them went, uh, uh, I'd love to, but I, I can't afford books. We went, oh, it's all online. It's all online. But they're like, no, no, I, yeah, 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 it's not a stop for me. And I've built several homebrew engines and stuff like that over the years. So I built a very like, stripped down, simplified homebrew engine, which is basically had strength decks and a bunch of skills and said, right, there's your base character. We'll run with this system generate your characters we'll just rumble that and we'll do complete homebrew and we just started taping them literally just so the rest of the people who showed interest could listen to them and it wasn't till we recorded i think it was our 20th episode where people had come and gone and a couple had joined and we got a much more of a stable cast but by the time we got 20 episodes in um someone in the cast was like well i'm a music student i can do i can make clean the audio up and put music to it and we can make a proper podcast of it would you be interested and i'm just like I don't know who would listen to it, but they're like, yeah, 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 no, seriously, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can, I can strip up the audio, I can make it good for you. And um, yeah, that's that's basically how we started. Um, I I wasn't originally meant to be an editor, I was meant to just be the writer, but after I think it was five episodes, I started being drafted in as the editor as well. And then uh, here well, I am. Well, you managed to edit it yourself later. because if, if you have a bad moment, it's gone. If your friends have a bad moment, you can leave it in and, you know, the, for the world to see um so uh back to dragon so you're playing along and you're part of the podcast now like were you one of the original on board or did you have to be coerced later as he said part of the no i was i was in from the first episode from the first episode and yeah. what about um do you have a favorite like for you personally i mean obviously you put together a show and you play who you play um first let me ask you who do you play in your podcast and do you have beyond that do you have a favorite character race, character class? Well, okay, so we've had a couple of different series. So there, there have been different settings. So I've had a fairly wide range of characters. Mm -hmm. The one I'm playing just now, so we release two separate series over a summer. So the summer series that I'm in at the moment is an adaptation of Out of the Abyss and my character is a female drow and she's she's kind of somewhere between neutral evil and true neutral um, she mostly just wants to get the hell out of the Underdark so she started off as a character for my in-person D&D group mm -hmm. and then I ended up DMing that so she had to have somewhere else to go so I managed yeah. to oh put her into this no it's your chance to make your character 10 times cooler because then you know you're, you're behind the screens going yeah, and she does it yeah, saves you no i'm just kidding um so that's one and you said you've got several well before we talk about the content itself i'm still trying to focus on on you the guests um in your current um in, in your current um i guess main podcast like what's going on right now uh who do you play same joe or um, I'm not in the, the long running series that we have at the moment. Um, I've been helping Nikolai with the adapting and story writing for it. Um, I do, I play the role of the narrator, essentially. So we always have a catch up at the start of each episode because okay. it's really easy to lose and forget what has happened the week before. You might not have had a chance to catch up. You might just want to listen to the catch up. Okay. Um, so I tend to, I, we work out a script and then I write up, well, we write up and then I write, I give them the narration at the start of the episode, essentially. 
okay. um, which seems to work quite well, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I can usually get. I find it really frustrating because when I listen to them, I'm sitting there like. I can hear all the clues that Nikolai's put in this. Why can't you hear this? <laughs> Why can't you hear this? Pick up the DMQs. That, that's funny. Pick up the DMQs. Uh, Dragon, your pop filter's rubbing your mic a little bit there. Um, same question to you, Nikolai. Oh, sorry. Uh, never really finished uh, with Dragon. Let's say if you could only play one race in one class, like for the rest of, you know, whatever. Like, what's your absolute favorite? That's difficult. I always play non-human. Okay, well that's a start. But I am really enjoying my drow at the moment. Probably, actually, I'd probably stick with um, what Therese is, which is the drow sorcerer. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wild magic sorcerer. Oh yeah, which yeah. I just love the chaos of it. It's yeah. just... There, there's a Anything great. Anything can happen. There's a great series in the Forgotten Realms novels called the Avatar series, and they wrote a trilogy of books explaining why Second Edition D and D switched to Third Edition. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of it all, when the all the Forgotten Realms pantheon got booted out of heaven, as it were, and had to walk around on Earth, all the chaos, wild magic sprung up. And then you had the wild magic angle, and then all, everything went to print, and you had wild magic sorcery, and it stayed within the game. It's a very fun aspect uh, from that on. Um, Nikolai, same question for you, sir. Do you have a favorite, do you have a go-to race or go-to class, personal favorite um, on or off the mic? I haven't really properly played in a long time. I prefer writing and DMing, to be honest, but... When I do play, I tend to play more the sort of chaotic good characters, more the sort of like the mess, like the not really following social norms, and they just basically seem to have either a problem understanding or a problem not following why there's all these layers between things. You know, it's like if you walk up to them and say, "Oh, I'm poor, I need money," they just go, "Here you go, here's all the money the group have," and the group be like, "Why just give it to them? Well, they need money." They don't understand <laughs> that sort of layer in between. You know, they have that kind of like. If someone needs help, we just directly help them. You know, there's no ulterior motives. Why would they exist? It's just that kind of very simplistic, very, you know, trying to be good for good's sake, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah That kind yeah. of character. And that's much more the kind of one I prefer to play rather than uh, anything more sort of established, I guess. We, we did a first take of this interview, and your, the, the story of the chaotic paladin that was sent mid-combat to do a yeah. distraction. Um, I think it was Dragon that started that story. You are talking about playing with you. So is this why you prefer to be a DM? Because as a player, something like that happened? Can we have that I, story again? I just think that <laughs> my, previous, my previous experience of um, being a player under a DM, I, I've had a lot of bad DMs in the past, a lot of bad DMs. But um, the worst one was possibly the one that i was playing that paladin for because she wasn't very good at elaborating things and it was things like you had a path and i was like well can i go and look at the bushes at the side see there's anything no can i deviate from this path at all no can i do this no and every time i just was like well can i i'm going to use my initiative i'm going to create this thing and do this thing and do that what what can i do from this no you can't oh. and all the story was <laughs> read off the page and there wasn't anything to it and i just was like I just felt myself getting like um, cabin fever, just like I want to do something that's not here. <laughs> why oh. can't I just go and do this? Why can't I do that? And um, that's one of the main reasons why I like DM. I like having the, I like thinking on my feet and having the, the story lurch to the left. How do I fix it? How do I, what do I do? How do I yeah. keep building this world when I've not really thought about that left turn? The... I much prefer that feeling to playing. Um, the the rapidly person. painting the scenery, the DM with a yeah. paintbrush, ah, as the characters run off and poke around every corner. No, I, I, I know that one. However, as a DM, Nikolai very definitely has a type of NPC that he's very fond of role playing. Oh, is that is this NPC saying no a lot? <laughs> I hope not, because he said it says go to word now. Do elaborate, Dragon, please. You're in trouble now, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> he has a tendency to go for like crazed cultist types so he'll be so there will be oh god so we had a <laughs> is it like every store owner like i'd like to buy this gold ring of course and you know 
praise Can the I dark tell you about? Is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I just have a love of crazed cultists and zealots. I just think that <laughs> the overall, like, just the fan fanaticism and all that, it just intrigues me. Um, and this kind of, like, you know, you would do anything for the god, wouldn't you? Just that kind of the levels of dedication and just madness that can brood in a character that's got something like that just intrigues I've, me so much. I've got the perfect thing for you. If you guys ever switch to like start playing Pathfinder, uh, what mm -hmm. sold me on Pathfinder is their archetype system. So other than a prestige class where you like take levels of this to qualify and levels of that and ranks of this to qualify and now poof, you put it together and you are the, this, the new thing, right? What they do is they flavor a character class. Let's take a monk, for instance, and you have your static monk, but you want to be the drunken master because you love that Jackie Chan movie. They slot out certain things uh, talents and things along the way so they remove something like stunning fist and they put something comparable the same strength level but it's flavored towards the new archetype like drinking mm -hmm. down some booze getting a match and you know getting your flame on kind of thing and these archetypes have made pathfinder very very um popular so there's a class called the inquisitor it's a hybrid class and you got like a d8 you kind of roguish you've got um a smattering of spells so it's like a it's supposed to be like this ranged clerical uh, skill bunny that's allowed to take his wisdom stat and add it to all the skills and everything like he intuitively knows things so you have this great new class now they have all different sorts of types of them and one literally carries around an iron bound holy book and it is his weapon his shield it's chained to his waist <laughs> you literally bible thump people with this book and my friend and new cast member joe gibson found this and we're talking about playing hell's vengeance for our new podcast the foul play podcast releasing in october and he couldn't decide on what to play and this came up and we're like oh yes please oh you got it no just like just the comedy aspect you know what i mean so yeah, um yeah. I guess what I'm getting at, Nikolai, is you could still have what you want, but if you could find a flavor or a character class or something that's either funnier to the rest of the party or, you know, type of thing you take it so seriously, yeah. then you get to get your game on and, you know, have your good time um, as well. But, sorry, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm taking the... So the aspect of Tag of... Oh, somebody asked me the other day, was, what's the Tag of Eternity? I don't understand. You're not, like, you're not being mean to them. You're not... I was like, no, 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 no. Their stories in Spoken remind me of my own, and I'm constantly, you know, um, you know, taking my attack of opportunity to you know get it get in a quick little story or whatever but sometimes i take it too far so you guys start making your own content you're 20 episodes you get your editing down you know you're you're going forward um we have your favorite choices and what you like to play um and we've already talked about your inspirations uh you know and that kind of thing so Next thing I'd like to know is where are you? Where do you guys make this content? Do you have a studio? Do you all pile into Dragon's like laundry room? I guess the dryer would kind of set things off for the audio. But you only know, like where do you guys actually produce this from? Where are you? Um, well, we're all in different places, really. So there's there was originally three of us in Glasgow, but we all recorded from our own homes, mm -hmm. and everyone else is quite spread out. So we have a couple of cast members. In England, we have Wednesday Le Fay from the Dum Dum Die podcast. Is oh, currently in a best. Really? I know. Ca I know. She's Carla in South from Africa. Africa. Yeah, I know Carla from Dum Dum Die. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to danger. I was just very surprised. It's like, oh, well, small world. There you go. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got. We've also got a player who lives in South Sweden as well. So, so everyone's use... so spread out. And uh, Shiraz is in India as well. Yes. Do you guys are do you guys use Zoom like we do? Um it's a pleasure to no, meet uh... someone that actually has to do a virtual studio like we. Everyone I've met and interviewed, you know, all around the table with these microphones, and I'm like, Am I the only guy that actually has like three Canadians spread across Canada and four Americans spread across America? And that like that's like you know, you gotta not Skype in a call because their audio is horrible, but like using Zoom, recording through Zencaster at each person's, you know, that type of thing. I'll talk to you about that wonderfulness later. Uh oh, just a treat pleasure to meet someone that has to suffer what we do here at I the mean, role mongers podcasting yeah. network where it's all virtual all the time and you give that illusion like you're all right next to the yeah. guy that chemistry down the table I mean, kind of thing for us the whole thing is ever since we started as i said we were just a group of folks that like to play games together and we started being on our uh, guilds team speak channel and we used to record through the team speak record option 
Oh yeah. Just why the first like thirty episodes are just horrible audio wise. Um, we oh. will. We are. But I say we are going to. We're probably going to remaster them at some point. But mm. it's at some point the sort of TM soon. Um, we we tried remastering we our first season, first couple episodes of our Star Wars: Dawn of Defiance campaign for the Saga Edition. Mm. And, no, it does not happen. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you might have to just realize that yeah. you know, unless you want to put disclaimer yeah, like brand new editing going. Hi, things, this is but... us when we were early. You know. It's one of the things yeah, I'd love to do because I feel that I feel that I'm far better at editing now than I ever used to be, um, and the editor we had back then. I don't want to say bad things about her, so I'm not going to say anything. No, no. Um, but what do you, yeah, what do you I use? just feel that looking back at it now, we could do so much better with the recordings, even if they're crappish quality, than is actually out there. And I think when people start listening to us, they always go back to the early episodes and say, "Hey, we'll listen to you from the start," and then you just have that horrible gut feeling of they're listening to those those episodes <laughs> we're so much better than them please we're so much better than them oh. don't just listen to them like listen to yeah. our later series listen to our curse yeah. series listen to our best series plummet listen to them they're great or the later series of perfect God. please don't listen to the early one but it's it's you, you don't you know you don't know whether you should delete them or you should keep them for sort of like we've come a long way look where we started or whether you should um do something about them do you know what i mean it's that kind of we are so much better now than we used to be <laughs> that, that's a hard that's a hard question a lot of people you know you hear about penance you go to the first one and then you listen to the audio that might be questionable and people go oh, that's so great and they'll move on to the next podcast but there are some really good podcasts that you know keep it all and there are some yeah. that just dump everything and and you know start over uh you know that's it's a hard choice it's when you know like no one can give you that answer for it but i do feel you hey, you know and you're not alone there's a lot of us podcasters out there just cringing at the first episode of the first show if you have multiple shows and yeah. you know people reach out and they're like oh i listen to your podcast you know and it's yeah which one and they say the name you're like ah oh, oh really no 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 please <laughs> Um, yeah. We literally yeah. had a guy reach out, and we were doing our second edition um, podcast one shot, and everyone was playing Doomsday Dawn. And we're like, we're not doing that. We're doing something else. We're gonna do Ark Lords Envy, Pathfinder Society Adventure, Fifth Level, Go, and we actually just had the Canadian crew and some friends as bonus members, so we did it in the living room. And I have all these pictures on Instagram with T-shirts my son made. And we're all like, having a great time. We had a ball. The audio was terrible because we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and uh, first five episodes that we shot in a single day are, are total crap. And then we went back to the virtual, you know, but this guy just gushing in his letter, Jarrett Mercer, you know, I was reminded of playing with my friends and I had so much fun listening to your show. And, you know, do you have any pointers? And I said, Jared, I'm going to make you my intern and you work for me now and you will sit in. No, I did. We took this fan and we sat him in a game and just made him watch us play because he could learn so much by being a part of it as opposed to me yeah. just going on and on with my personal notes of oh you should do this and you shouldn't do this you know type of thing one of the biggest mistakes i made was listening to the first people that would talk to me first people that i thought they knew what they were doing and they were doing great on their own and you just took their word as gospel without talking yeah. to a multitude of people so whatever i tell you i hope it's good advice but move on ask the next guy the next guy the next guy and then decide for yourself at the end I don't mean to put answers in your head when you ask these like open questions because that was one of the first big mistakes. I'm telling you, that was one of the first big mistakes. I'm Yeah, there I go again. <laughs> um, so how long have you guys been actually creating this content? How long has this been running? We Over started, three years. Yeah, we, we started the like a year. It was like the June before we actually released, we actually started recording and that's when the recordings happened. And then it wasn't until the following February that we started releasing. So it was uh june roughly june 2016 we started recording but we didn't release anything at all till february 2017. no that's we're like three years old and going strong i'd like to hope <laughs> so um how many different shows do you have and are they under the same banner everything is classed as coming under penance rpg okay so we have the original series we have a mini series based on Call of Cthulhu, which was absolutely hilarious, and it was one of our regular players actually who GM'd it. It was. I'm sorry, you said, C so you said CD. Are we talking about merchandise, like an actual CD recording that you can? 
when you say CD, I think of like, you know, compact disc, buy at the store. GM? You were talking about your original CDs. That sounds like a music CD. CD. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's, that's the accent. Uh, original CDs. So it was just called Penance RPG. Oh, okay. There is a music track for it, but that's that was something that got added on later on. Sorry. Okay. No, I just <laughs> this I is wanna, like the accent I, being the issue. Can, can, I, can I walk into an indie game store or something and it's like there's the Penance CD and you guys have like an audio show on CD that people can, not that anyone <laughs> buys CDs anymore. I mean, Blockbuster is longer. All right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but you know, that that's why we're here to connect and, and to learn. And you know, the, the language barrier between English and English is there. Okay, I am known for completely destroying the English language. There's a running joke that common is fun with me uh, from our shows and everything. And I find it interesting. I love the accents and I love, you know, even the Americans and the Canadian cast myself. Sorry, sorry, and all this type of thing. We have we have a big joke out of it. I just wanted some clarification because in that instance, I was going way. I was ready to go buy your CD at the store. But you were talking about something completely different. Sorry. So the <laughs> Penance RPG is a, a network now. You have several shows. Um, we we've done ser what we did is we tend to focus on one show. Uh, we did the original series, which was Penance RPG. We then did what happened is I after we came back from Dragon Meat, which is a uh, convention we did in 2017. Uh, I was talking to the group of people I'd run a one shot with, and I asked them if I converted Curse of Strad to our style and rewrote the entire thing and ran it in a Penance RPG style. Would you be interested in being players? And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. So we ran them in tandem, which was the original series, Penis RPG, and Curse of Strad, we, which is called, called Curse of Penis RPG. Once the original series finished, we replaced it with the series that's currently running, which is called Plummet, which is based around adapting the story from the Descent board game. And the other series we did, which is our... Other adaptation is we're adapt currently in the middle of, I think just about to reach the sort of tail end of our adaptation of Abyss or Out of the Abyss, which is another fifth edition D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. um, but we have two active at the moment, which is Plummet and Abyss. And we've had the original series, Call of Phoenix RPG, which was the uh, Call of Cthulhu five uh, episode one shot that, or six episode one shot that Bellary ran. And we've got a couple of like one shots and mini series things that we did like an anime cast for a while, which was where three or four people in the cast who just loved anime. So one night when I was I had no throat because my throat had swollen up, I was I can't speak. I just pushed a microphone in front of them and said just talk about anime for two hours and I'll edit it. And we ended up with <laughs> that just being whenever someone was ill, we just shoved the microphone in front of them and said talk about anime. <laughs> and we got I think it's six, six or seven episodes out of that. So yeah, oh, that's, that, um, that downtime, we've got a lot that, of weird and different things. We've got something for everyone. That downtime is really good. We started very recently. We started a podcast called the After Party Podcast. I had a pilot a year ago, and I just put up four episodes, just waiting for those moments where you're all signing on. And we're waiting for that last guy to show up, and everyone starts talking about their day, and then they, the stories come out. And then we're in between shows. Yeah. We go from shooting Dice Before Dishonor, the All Cavalier Party, trying to do War for the Crown, Pathfinder Society our Pathfinders AP and then we're gonna switch to Star Wars and there's that half an hour break of grabbing something either way and again the stories and I just they're the guy we're just kept recording and the the better stories we've started filming and putting up there and uh no again it's just a treat to meet somebody else that does that just like whoop show must go on you know here you go whether you're talking anime or, or anecdotes um so you mentioned Actually, my next question, Nick's great, really good for like answering my next follow up question is, do you guys <laughs> attend? No, no, that's good because it, it feeds into the um, do you guys attend conventions and gatherings and where can fans meet you? Like, do, have you ever considered setting up a live show or a booth or can you just be found wandering, you know, said convention and maybe, you know, approach you and go, hey, I'm a fan. I flew here from Canada. Please talk to me. You know, like these people exist. <laughs> that might be one. I just might, you know. Um, uh, did you, you want guys... to take this dragon? <laughs> where, where can we find you in person? So we there's a couple of conventions that we go to and have been to. Like Nikolai mentioned Dragon Meet, which is a one-day gaming convention in London mm -hmm. that's held 
end of November, start of December every year. So we've been part of something called the Podcast Zone there for the last two years, which is essentially a group of British, mostly British podcasts. Um, and then we have like a stall within the convention. People can come over and talk to us. We ran games there so that people could sign up to come and play a game with us, with part of the cast and with Nikolai running it. We've, there's a couple of conventions in Scotland that we go to and that tends to be more, we're wandering around um, because partly because we are also big into board games it's quite nice to be able to go to the conventions and not have to man a stall all the time we can go and we can try out the different games and things that are there okay. and we've we're almost certainly going to be going to pod uk next year which runs in february which is a podcast dedicated convention that seems to have quite a large um, gaming aspect to it mm -hmm. and they're looking at putting on live performances so that oh, would so, so hopefully you guys have got that will be covered. our next step yeah you, you guys are you know it's rare to like oh i'll go to this gen con or something in two years or whatever um no it yeah. sounds like you guys uh, have got you it also, covered you can also find us at uh, tabletop scotland next month or whenever this comes out because this is that's in the end of august i think we tend to go that every year. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So a couple of personal questions, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Dragon, what do you do for a living normally? This is a hobby that's become a podcast and guess what people, it's expensive or it can be. Now you can do it cheaply and or you could devote too much money like some of us do into it and hopefully maybe through Patreon or something, there's some feedback and it helps pay the bills and you know everybody wants to be Matt Mercer. But the truth, just it just isn't so. You gotta do this for love. You gotta love doing it. And it's going to cost you. But you know what? People can spend more on golf, beer, and football than they do on this. So it is conceivable. It's enough, not conceivable. It's a justifiable cost. But my question for you is, what's paying the bills right now for you guys? You know, what do you do for a living, Dragon? Well, if it's bringing you enough enjoyment, most things are a justifiable cost. There you go. Really. I like um, that answer. I was an archaeologist. So I was a professional field archaeologist. I was out on building sites, on archaeological sites, doing excavations. And we do, or we did, an awful lot of watching while builders are starting to do things to make sure they don't accidentally destroy something. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Nikolai, you... you... Yep. Off the air, we talked about you guys dating for four years. You let... Yep a cute scottish indiana jones go <laughs> what is wrong with you what is wrong with you that is like the coolest thing ever i play dd oh and i am an archaeologist we were talking about um in my last interview i was talking about how people bring their work to the game you know i'm a doctor so i could be the cleric or i'm a this or i'm a right uh, one of our cast members is an electrician and he can't wait to start to pure steam to do some steampunk because obviously an, an electrician in that victoria age steampunk with some electricity you know he's got some ideas you know you're an archaeologist you were an archaeologist <laughs> like talking about everyone pushing you up front going no no we want you at the beginning of the party like at the point you know let us know what's going on here that's that's Sorry, that, that really just kind of took me. You know, it was amazing. I'm a huge Indiana <laughs> Jones fan. You know, our go-to pod that started us was the Mummy's Mask, and it flopped, and we, we could never get it off the ground. So we killed it, and now we're trying to get it back, you know. Uh, I'm <clears throat> I'm sorry, Nikolai. I, I really didn't mean to have you try to uh, fo follow up such an amazing question. What the, what do you do for a living? Um, I, I've currently basically been signed off for a while because I used to be an ex-nurse. An ex and I was okay. just basically worked into the ground and had a lot of crazy stuff happen um, hmm. from my past that kind of triggered it. And I've been basically the last two, three years, I've been using a lot of the podcast stuff as a sort of kind of like a rehabilitation and back to work and stuff like that. Because I devote literally I can do 60, 80, 100 hour weeks just in the podcast. Yeah. Um, and it's literally just when I can't, like I, I struggle with anxiety, I struggle with um, depression. And uh, I have uh, PTSD, 
couple of things like that. So I struggle with a lot of stuff. Um, so I sometimes struggle to go outside, deal with people, interact with things. Um, and usually if I do, my energy levels are just wane, wane completely. Um, but I usually just spend all my time dealing with a podcast and just editing and writing new things. And I love, I love writing and creating. Uh, it's one of the best things I, I just love doing that with my time. No, it's great. Uh, the only problem is, is that the yeah. editing just drives me mental. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's like um, a detox, and I totally get it. We have a male nurse on our cast. Um, we have a cast member with muscular dystrophy, and unfortunately, he that this young man is destined to you know spend part of his life, if not beyond, in a wheelchair. Uh, and we have a couple that struggle with depression, and you know this is their escape. I mean, it's, a lot of people just like, oh, this is my fun escape. Some people, this is a serious, um, not escape from reality. And I'm not saying it's therapy, but a serious, important part of their lives that helped them rebuild something inside as well yeah, as I mean, express yeah. themselves outside. And I'm sorry to get all you know emotionally personal here with you, Nikolai, but I, I can't personally understand what you're going through. But having disabled parents, having um, f friends and family that have serious bouts of depression and everything, I've been exposed to it and I've seen it and I... I really like the fact that a game like this or being brave enough to put your content online, um, I, I really think it's a step in the right direction. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I, mean, I, I'm sorry. I mean, there's days literally where you can look at it and it doesn't matter if it's gone better than the day before, you still go, I could have done better, I could have done better, I could have done better. And it's yeah. all about trying to keep it in perspective and keep going. Like, today's been a bad day, but, you know it could have just been this could have just been that let's just tomorrow be better and tomorrow is better sometimes and you get yeah. a lot of that and it's just kind of like trying to believe in yourself that something you do people will actually care about oh, yeah. um which is a huge stepping stone yeah no, um today's so rotten, a lot of people don't realize how bad it can be at times but yeah Today's been terrible for you. You met, you met me, GM Jeffs and Ars, and thank God Dragon's here to carry it. <laughs> yeah, Mike wasn't turned on. Yeah, yeah, it was a, ter it was a ter terrible day. Just, you just can't wait for this interview to end. Uh, but it's not quite over yet. I want to know, <laughs> do you guys have any merchandise out there with the logo and that type of thing? Can we put the Penis RPG? I love this red sort of captain's wheel with the compass inside it and the Penis RPG and the RPG letters sink in. I really like your logo. Can I get it on a mug and a t-shirt? Uh, do you guys actually have merch available? Uh, it will do very soon very soon i haven't quite got it published yet but it will be oh, okay so we're going to be launching on teespring and redbubble soon yes. i just haven't quite got through everything yes yeah. I, had, I had a cultist come to me and say have you heard about the miracle of teespring i'm like no tell me more i had son my son <laughs> you know start summer business and start printing shirts and that's over now i was like oh yes for only this you know um teespring wanting their 12 dollars, and then you get your profit and then they're shipping so personally we we took our profit margin down to like five bucks or less just so yeah. people are paying 20 30 for a t-shirt not 50 60 which is ridiculous yeah, yeah exactly um yeah. i i personally i think the defaults are quite expensive mm. on it so one of the things that's taking me time is you have to go through every style and go okay no that needs to that needs adjusted i need to change the color yeah. options that are in here for every single one. Oh, i know i spent days it's and i released a line with the default um prices and it's like i gotta take that down it's way too expensive and uh, but i like the yeah. fact that teespring you got a charity uh personally we're we're trying to uh, do a donation thing to diabetes my mom has diabetes and we're trying to do that or whatever and i i made it public as i am right now going no you know we're not we don't want you to wear a t-shirt for profit uh, but it's like it's really cool you're wearing our t-shirt i don't need to make 10 20 bucks a shirt uh yeah. can't take exactly. it down sorry can't take it down to like a dollar and it there's not much difference between the $14 shirt and the $19 shirt. You know, we need something coming this way to pay bills. But um, anyway, sorry, it sounds like we're slamming Teespring, but they are great. You could take that logo and slap it up there in 20 minutes, pink, blue or red, and be done and have it on, on the Internet, you know, that type of thing. So we'll look yeah, forward to maybe yeah, a Teespring just... slash, you know, penance.com for a t-shirt i know you know I'm, I'm curious now i actually want to go online and see you know how much it would toss to ship you ship me one of your shirts you know so we do a private deal send you one of mine for one of yours and i'll wear it proudly <laughs> um we've been talking to rowena known as dragon and nikolai 
Pavitsky, who have gone above and beyond Hands Across the Water in our international edition, have shared some very personal insights and given you a behind the scene look at some, just a few of the movers and shakers behind the Penance RPG podcast. Guys, thank you so much for being on our show today and joining us. No thank problem. you. Anytime. Talk to you. And we will see you next time on Attack of Opportunity. <laughs>